Rice. It's a food you commonly see in the dog food industry. But did you know rice can actually create health problems if fed long term? I personally love rice. It's the only carb I probably wouldn't be able to give up. But is it a food source that's beneficial for dogs? In this video, I'll be going over rice as an ingredient in commercial and homemade dog food, as well as research and studies that go over the effects rice has on dogs' bodies and what you should feed instead. Rice is a grain that is mostly made up of carbohydrates and is often found as a main ingredient on the back of kibble packaging. Commercial brands often claim that rice provides energy as well as protein for your dog, but the real reason why it's a main ingredient in commercial diets is because carbohydrates are essential to give kibble structure. Additionally, it's a much more economical energy source than fat and protein. Basically, it's cheap and easy. Rice is a common base in home-cooked meals as well. The idea in many home-cooked meals is to provide the ingredients that the commercial food includes, but in its fresh whole state. Should you really be following the ingredient list of commercial food though? Rice is also the first suggestion given for diarrhea as it's bland and contains elements that absorb water passing through the GI tract. Essentially, it stops the diarrhea, but doesn't treat the heart of the problem. Okay, so I've made a lot of claims, but where is the evidence to back this up? Let's first break down the claim that rice provides protein and energy. For protein, let's look at this in terms of numbers. 100 grams of chicken breast, for instance, contains 31 grams of protein, while 100 grams of cooked white rice only contains 2 grams. Should this really be a major protein source? When it comes to energy, dogs rely on fat over carbohydrates. Fat is essential for nutrient absorption, transportation, and is their ideal source of energy. The energy from carbohydrates comes from the sugar created after their body has metabolized it. Why is this bad? White rice ranks very high on the glycemic index. This index rates how quickly and how high the food source causes the blood sugar levels to spike after consumption. The index assigns a number between 0 to 100, with 50 grams of pure glucose receiving a rating of 100. What number is white rice assigned? 72, with only a few other starchy foods like white bread, potatoes, and cornflakes being higher than that. So, when your dog consumes carbohydrates like rice, it metabolizes into sugar, causing their blood sugar to spike, which then can lead to diabetes and weight gain. This brings us to inflammation. High glycemic index carbs also trigger the body to produce a chronic inflammation response. Studies have reported the mechanism by which the high GI diets induce inflammation by stating that high GI diets induce hyperglycemia, which induces oxidative stress and increases pro-inflammatory cytokines. The increased level of pro-inflammatory cytokines in turn causes disruptions in insulin signaling, subsequently leading to insulin resistance. This will be linked below. And then, arsenic levels. Faculty of the Veterinary Medicine Department at the University of Helsinki conducted a study on Staffordshire Bull Terriers that tested the arsenic levels in their fur after being on a rice-based dry dog food. The results showed that the arsenic levels were significantly higher in the dogs fed the rice-based diet than the dogs that didn't consume any rice. This study will be linked below as well. The bottom line is dogs do not need rice in their diet. As mentioned previously, many home-cooked diets try and mimic commercial foods, but by using fresh whole ingredients instead. While this is a great start in the right direction, the ingredients that make up kibble and canned food isn't what you should be referencing for your homemade diet. Instead, follow the nutritional requirements created by the Nutritional Research Council. The NRC's breakdown is used as the basis for nutritional adequacy as they provide expert advice based on scientific evidence. The NRC does not provide any carbohydrate recommendations for adult dogs, meaning that it isn't necessary for them to sustain life. So why do commercial brands go by the standards of the Association of American Feed Control Officials, or AFCO, instead? AFCO allows pet food manufacturers to claim that their product is complete and balanced if it has complied with AFCO's feeding trial protocols, which is typically just a six-month trial. These balanced formulas are able to meet the industry standard, but not the scientific standard. Now, since rice is out of the question, what should you use if your dog is having diarrhea? First of all, if your dog is healthy otherwise, I would suggest fasting them for 12 to 24 hours to give the gut time to rest and reset. Of course, keep them hydrated. When you do feed them, if you feed a raw or cooked diet, feed lean white muscle meats and avoid high fatty cuts and skin. If feeding raw, also include raw meaty bones from chicken, turkey, duck, or rabbit. 
Do not ever feed cooked bones. You want to avoid muscular and secreting organs temporarily as the high nutrition content can be tough on the GI tract. The raw bone will also aid in firming the stool. Carbohydrates that can be beneficial in this situation are steamed dark leafy greens like kale and spinach to add fiber and firm the stool. Additionally, it would be beneficial for your dog to add in gut soothers and digestive aids such as bone broth, kefir, and slippery elm bark. These of course can be fed to kibble fed dogs as well. Bone broth is a great way to keep your dog hydrated and is similar to drinking chicken broth or soup when we're sick. Kefir is chock full of probiotics which help rebuild the gut flora to support digestive and immune health. Slippery elm bark is a natural food that helps reduce inflammation of the digestive tract by coating the gastrointestinal wall. Of course, if the diarrhea doesn't subside by 24 to 48 hours after the at-home treatment, take them to the vet. If you're interested in the raw diet and want to learn more, check these videos out.